Hi everyone, I'm Norma Refsal, and uh, today I'm going to be taking you through the steps of how to make a Sami-inspired bracelet using the traditional materials of reindeer leather, pewter thread, and a reindeer antler button. I'll begin by going through the steps for making a Sami-inspired three-braid bracelet that's going to be made to fit your wrist. It will be made out of reindeer leather, a reindeer antler button, and pewter thread. These three bracelets that, here, that are before me now are examples of the style of bracelet you'll be learning to make. And they're using, each one is using a different weight of pewter, which gives the bracelet a slightly different look. Next, I'm going to go through the tools that you'll need to have on hand so that you have success with this project. Uh, one of the first things that you'll need to have is a clamp. This is just a regular uh, small plastic clamp. It has about a two inch mouth on it here so that it will fit on a table edge, maybe um, on a very thick tablecloth, something that you can grab onto and give you some stability. I've opened up a regular paper clip and used that on the end of it. And when you braid your pewter, you'll just hook your pewter strands over this paper clip. And I'll point to some of them here. You'll need a flexible tape measure for measuring your wrist, a snap off razor, a seam guide, some water soluble glue. This is the one I tend to use the most of. It's called Scotch High Performance Repair Glue. It dries quickly, but not immediately, and it dries very clearly. You'll need some sort of a toothpick to spread it when it comes time to that, for that. You'll need nylon thread. This is called Orofil. It's an Italian thread that's available at most quilt shops. You can also use any kind of, of fish line as long as, it's as long as it's a fine line. You'll need two, two needles. You'll need a sewing needle. I use a Milner's needle. This is a size 10. And the other needle that you'll need is a leather needle or a Glover needle. And this is also a size 10. And you can tell them apart. The Glover needle has a very polished uh, three-pointed triangular head. I'll put those over there. Um, you'll need to have some artificial sinew and then the, the components for actually that make up the bracelet are the three strands of pewter and this is a 40 weight or I'm sorry it's a 0 .40, 0 0.40 weight each one is cut to approximately 55 centimeters you'll need a piece of leather that's at least as the diameter of your wrist and when you cut it cut it about Oh, at least two centimeters uh, wider or longer than than your than your wrist measurement. Um, so two cent uh, the diameter of your wrist plus two centimeters. You'll use a reindeer antler button and you'll use a piece of twisted cord to make the button loop. Uh, you'll also need a scissors. You might find a, a traditional ruler helpful and uh, a small pliers. When it comes time to sewing up the back, you might find that helpful as well. And then I do use a thimble, and that's, of course, optional for you. I'm going to demonstrate how you're going to measure your wrist using a flexible tape measure. You're going to put the tape measure just around your wrist like this. I just let it, let it hang like that, and I have the, the beginning of the tape measure on top. And I put it around the widest part of my wrist, which is happens to be this bone right there. And I don't want the tape measure to either sag, and yet I don't want it to be, I don't want it to cut off my circulation either. So right here, we'll match up the zero with that six. And I'll take it off, holding it in place. And this tape measure goes in centimeters from zero to 10, and then it repeats. So 10 plus 6 is 16, and then I'm going to add another centimeter to that. And if you're unsure if you want a little bit more, go ahead and cut it up. You can even cut it one and a half centimeters longer. But write that measurement down. So you're going to write down, first of all, your wrist measurement. Mine is a 16, and then I'm going to add another centimeter to that. So 17 is the, um, that's how long I'm going to actually cut my leather. Next, you're going to do your actual braid with the pewter strands. You'll take your three strands, you'll put them over the hook that's on your clamp, pinch it at the top, divide them into units of two, and start to braid a traditional three braid, which is left over the middle, right over the middle. 
In the first couple of sequences, you're just arranging your thread, so it doesn't really matter how they look. So I've done two sequences, so now I'm going to pay attention. And what I'm going to pay attention to is that the one on the top of each unit always remains on the top and doesn't cross over. So now this is left over the middle. And then I'm also going to, when I've done a sequence, I'm going to push my working thread almost horizontally and slide that, push it right into place. Now it's right over the middle, pushing it into place. Left over the middle, pushing it into place. Right over the middle left over the middle, and I'm going to check my sequence as I go because I don't want any crossovers, and the crossover is this, when you happen to go this one over the, the top one over the bottom one. So you don't want it to look like that. And I'll do two of them so you can see how it looks when you've done it. Suddenly the braid gets narrower, and that's not what we're going for. That is a technique, that's a braiding technique on its own, and you're welcome to do incorporate that later. But right now, you're going to be doing the traditional three braid where that does not cross over. So right over the middle, left over the middle, right over the middle, left over the middle. And when you push it into place, you don't have to, you really don't have to tug on the braid very hard. You're more manipulating it and pushing it into place. Right over the middle, left over the middle. And as I go, I'm checking back to see if I have any mistakes where the braid, where the top um, braid would have sort of migrated over the bottom one. So I'm just going to continue on down. You can see how I push that over horizontally like that and slide the slide that sequence into place. And you might find that you would like to practice on something first. So if you have some sort of chunky thread, a waxed cotton works really well, just about any anything that you can, that will give you some definition. So left over the middle, right over the middle, left over, right, left. And once I get to the bottom, I'll show you how you secure your braid. Right over, left over, right over, left, right, pushing it into place, kicking each working thread up almost horizontally as you go. Because you want it, you want the tension to be equal and you want it to be snug. You don't want to see a lot of blue sky between your between your sequences. You have to see a little bit because you have to get your needle in there, but you don't want to see a lot. Okay, so now I'm getting right down to the end, and I always braid all the way down to the end. Um, I'm that way, if I have a little bit extra, I can maybe make a ring out of it. And then also, if you have a little bit of extra, it gives you a little bit of flexibility when you place your bracelet on the leather. Okay, so this is as far as I'm going to go. So I'm gonna flip it up like this, and then I'm gonna hook my fingernail over one of those ends. I'll hold it up there. So it's right here. And then I draw that out like this. So I'm exposing the inner core, but I'm not pulling it any further than my thumbnail. And then I take that little piece of wire and I just wrap it around here about two or three times and press it. That will be, that's not a permanent hold on this. That'll come off, but that's just so it'll stabilize it now. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim it. Whenever you trim anything, just don't trim anything short. Just leave everything with a little bit of a tail. So now I'm taking this off. I can give it a little tug like that. And now it's going to be ready to place on my leather once I have that cut to, cut to shape. So I can set this aside. Now that you're finished with your braid, uh, you wanna be sure to check it out to see that the piece of leather that you're planning on using can accommodate this width of braid. 
So this is a 20 millimeters in diameter. So I'm gonna turn this over, fold it in half, and just lay my braid on top. And it's going to be a good fit. If your person or if your personal take or uh, style says that, oh, maybe you want it a little bit narrower, you can go ahead and trim about two millimeters, no more than two, off this piece. When you do that, turn it over so the backside is on top. You would tape it lightly on each end and stabilize it right in the middle. Then you would lay your ruler on top like this, holding it down snugly, and take your take your uh, snap-off razor and trim that off. That's a personal choice if you want to do that. So now we're going. I'm going to show you how you will fit the uh, pewter braid onto the piece of leather. So the first thing you want to do is be sure that you have one end of your leather that's square. So we'll lay it on the grid like this, and I'll just trim that like that. So I'll lay that end, and I'll cut off this end. So my length of my, my uh, diameter of my wrist was 16. And I'm going to add another centimeter to it, so 17. So I'm going to cut this piece of leather at 17 centimeters. Like I said, if you think you want it a little bit uh, bigger, if you're not sure, you can add a couple of millimeters to it. So here is 16. That's my wrist. There's 17. That's the length I want to have the, the bracelet. So I'm going to take my snap-off razor, make a meaningful cut there, put it back on my grid. You can see the little nick that I made there. I'll just line it up. I'll use my seam guide here, holding it in place. I'll cut that little piece off like that. So I'm going to test it on my wrist, right over the widest part of my wrist and it's overlays for a centimeter. This won't be the finished length of your bracelet. You're going to be adding a loop, which is going to make the bracelet about like that when it's finally finished. So that's all set to go. So now I'm going to cut the slits on each end so that I can tuck the ends of my bracelet underneath. When I do that, again, I'm on the back side, and I'm going to be using my seam guide for this. In each slit, I place about two centimeters from, the, from each end of the leather. Not two inches, not that, but two centimeters, which is this. And I'm going to write on the back side of my bracelet, and I only write on the back side. I never, I never tape, nor do I write on the front side of my bracelet. So I'm going to take a, just make a, have a pen and make a very light mark. I'm not making the line all the way to the end in case it would bleed. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Two centimeters. Hold it in place. A meaningful line so that you can see it when you fold it. Now I'm going to flip it back to the front and fold it like this. So you can see the line that I'm looking at and I want my slit to just accommodate my braid. I don't want it to be wobbly in there. I don't want the slit to be too big. So when I folded it over, now the line I'm going to cut is actually just half the diameter of my braid. So there it is right there. Better to have it a little bit snug than too loose. So folding it in half, remembering this is the diameter of my braid. So when I actually make the cut, you're going to hold it snugly, both sides that you've marked. You're making that cut just half the length or half the diameter of the bracelet. So now I'm going to take my, take my pewter and I'm going to thread it like this. I'm going to thread the other end as well. And it's easier to thread the folded end than it is that bundled end. 
So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to look, see which is the top and which is the bottom. Which side do I like best of the braid? You be sure to examine that as well. And this is, I like this side and I'm going to pull that. So it's just, a, just about even with the end. Now, if I had some mistakes in here, now would be the time when I could use this extra. I could push it a little bit that direction or this direction. And uh, so I could know exactly, so I would put my best part, the best part of my bracelet on the top, on, on the front side. If, you have, if your best part is, you know, right here, be sure you get that in there. So that's where I, that's what my placement is going to be. So now I'm going to glue it and I'm going to flip my bracelet down like this. And I'm going to take a little bit of tape actually. I'm going to hold that in place and I'm going to tape that down. You don't, this is just a little added security so it doesn't move. So the positioning doesn't move. Now when I do my gluing, I'm going to lift this part out and just push it back like that. I'm going to have it on my grid. And now I'm going to take my glue um, jar lid and I'll put some glue on here. It's probably going to be enough. It doesn't take a lot. And now starting at the slit, starting at right here, I'm going to start to place the glue right down the center. And you want enough glue so it holds it, but not so much that it oozes up into the sequences of the braid. It's hard to sew through um, dried glue, so just bear that in mind. You don't want too much, and yet you want enough so it will hold it in place. The gluing is not the final the final hold, what the glue does is keep it in place while you are actually sewing it. So it's not the final hold for it, but it's a good help. There are any number of techniques in this, in Sami inspired jewelry, where you don't use glue, but this is one that does. So I'll even that out a little bit. The Scotch High Performance Glue dries quickly, but not immediately. So now I'm going to take my braid, sort of turn it on the side, slide it through that slit, and lightly press it into place, making sure it's in the middle as you go. So is that in the middle? I can hold it up. That sometimes gives me a better look if I look down on the angle. It's really hard to see if something is straight if you look at it horizontally. Vertically, is a, you get a much better idea. And that looks, that looks very straight to me. If you're very concerned that you're not getting it in the middle, take your ruler and just push it up against the side of your ruler. That helps too. That... Um, Okay, so now I'm pleased with this, so I'm going to take the tape off and I'm going to set it, set it aside to dry, and it should dry probably in about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll go on to the next step. Now that your glue has dried, it's time to sew the pewter braid onto the leather. And the pewter braid is going to be sewn on with the nylon thread, the orophil that I talked about, which you can see is just about invisible, which makes it a little bit tricky um, getting a knot in it <coughs> and also the sewing technique. And I'll be explaining the sewing technique using a sewing card. Um, but before that, I do want to talk about threading the needle. And so you are going to be taking, you're going to be taking your Milner's needle which is this, and you're going to be taking a length of your nylon thread, and I wouldn't use more than about two feet, maybe a little bit more than two feet, but no more than that. So I've cut off a length of that thread, and uh, it's really hard to see, and I'm going to thread my needle 
with that. And then I'm going to actually tie my thread onto my needle using uh, two square knots. So I'll just explain that as I go. So I'm taking my long end over my short end. And I'm taking, <clears throat> now the ends have changed places. So again, I'm taking my long end over my short end. And again, the long end over the short end because each time the threads change places. And one, <clears throat> and one more time, I'm taking the long end over the short end. So now you have a set of two square knots. And if you don't tie your thread onto your needle, it will come, it will come unthreaded very easily. So the next thing I need to do is tie a knot in the end of my nylon or my invisible thread. And I'm going to do a demonstration of that using something you can actually see. So here I have a very large needle and it's threaded with a piece of red sinew. So I take, I'm going to hold the needle in one hand and I'm going to put the thread, the, the sinew, so I have them on both ends like this. I bring them together so they touch here and I just lay the top. I just lay the red sinew on top of the needle and I come and I wrap one, two, three, four. Don't pull it too tight or it's hard to get it off the needle. That's about four wraps for sinew. And I push it down into a pinch and I don't let go, and I take the needle and I just draw the thread down. And I have a nice, big, fat knot. I'm gonna do that again. So I have the needle in one hand and the tail in the other hand. I lay the needle on, I lay the tail right on top of the needle, so it just meets my pinch right here. I wrap it one, two, three, four times, and then I use my index finger and I push that wrap right down into my pinch and I don't let go. And then with this hand, which is now free, I take the needle and I work it, thread off, don't let go, and you have a nice big fat knot. So I'm going to set that aside. And now I'm going to do that with my nylon thread. So I have it's a longer piece here. So I have my thread. I have the tail in one hand. I have the needle in the other hand. I lay the thread on top of the needle. Hang on. And now with the nylon thread, because it's so uh, thin, I have to wrap it 10 or 12 times. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I haven't pulled it tightly. Just it's on the needle, but it's so it's not uh, gapping, but it isn't tight. And then I put it down into my pinch. Hang on. And then I have a really nice knot on that end. So, and that's a knot that's a meaningful knot. So I'll be able to, I'll be able to sew, um, so it'll it won't come out in my thread, or in my when I start to sew uh, the pewter onto the leather. So at this point, I'm going to pick up my, pick up my thimble. People sometimes say, "What? How do I know where to wear a thimble?" And you just wear a thimble on. You start out sewing, and if your finger hurts, whatever finger hurts, that's the finger that you put your put your thimble on. The technique for sewing the pewter onto the um, leather. So we're going to start. This is a this is two different methods, and we'll do we'll do this one up here. So you're going to start on the back side where the purple or the purple or the blue dot is. You come up from the back side, and you go over those two threads down where the green is, and then from the underside, you come back up where the blue is, down where the green, up to the blue, down into the green, only passing over those two threads. So you kind of tuck your 
nylon thread into the shadow of these other two threads. And then you go all the way up to the top, and then you're going to turn your piece, and then when you come down on the other side, you'll come up, because it's a three braid, so it isn't exactly the same, you'll come up where the red is, and then you sort of loop backwards, and then go down where the yellow is. Loop back up to where the red line is, down to the yellow, loop back up, red down to yellow, red down to yellow, and you work your way all the way back up to the end. And then to finish it off, you just tie um, two, two or three simple loop knots where you catch the thread, make a pull it almost all the way through, make a loop, and then put your needle into that, snug it, and do another one. So I'm going to put this aside, and I'm going to pick this up. So I'm going to start right here, where I'm going to bring my needle in from the back. And I don't, I don't want my thread to show, so I want to come right up at that waistline. Go over those two threads into that first sequence. Now I'm on the back side. I come up here, go over those two threads into that sequence all the way up so I'll get it started and you don't want to split your threads either and if you think you are seeing them too much then you might have to take it out so now I'm back into that little waistline and now I'm up here So I'm right there. Draw my thread to the top, and I go over those two threads into that open sequence. Come to the back, pull my needle out, and now I'm at the next waistline up here. You can come in at a little bit of an angle so that you don't see the thread. So there you are. Go over those two threads into the waistline. Again, coming up from the back side. So you're always on the back side, you're always going to be coming into the waistline. And then on the top, you're going to be coming down into the middle. All the way up. You're going to do this all the way up one side and down the other side. This is maybe this part might take you a little while. So coming up at the waistline. Down into the sequence. If you think you have a knot, don't pull, because you probably do have a knot, and try and get it out. So, and be sure that you don't loop your thread. Always remember when you come up, remember where your thread is. You're either on the, on the bottom or the top. But if you're on the bottom and you come up by the t on the top by mistake, then the only way, and you keep going, the only way out is to cut it off your, cut it off your needle and re-thread. Take the mistake out and re-thread. So I'll do it one more time here. So now I'm up here at the waistline into the sequence. And you continue on all the way up and then you turn it and now, now you're on your bottom part again. And when you come back on the other side, you'll start here. You'll start up. right there and from there you will bring your thread you'll go from there down to here then loop back up here down to there loop back under at the waistline and down and you'll go all the way up to the other end